Hey guys, how you doing? This is MMPR Fan 94 and today I'm going to be doing a follow up to my uh, video game console reviews. Now on my channel I already have the Super Nintendo and I have the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. So today I'm going to finally get around to doing uh, the Super Nintendo's older brother, uh, the Nintendo 64. Now before I show you the system and its games, I'm going to give you a little background on it. Um, it was released in Japan in June 1996 and then in the, in the United States in September 1996 and then Europe got it in March of 1997. So that was really the, the release date. Now, unfortunately, the Nintendo 64 it was a great system but it had a bit of competition. It was coming near the time where Nintendo originally had started an adventure with Nintendo to make a CD add-on for the Super Nintendo, but things went things went wrong and and Nintendo and Sony parted ways. So the Super Nintendo CD add-on never happened. So basically what happened was Sony went out on their own. And then that became the PlayStation. So the Nintendo 64 had to compete with the PlayStation. And not saying that the Nintendo 64 was rubbish, because it's definitely not rubbish by all means. But PlayStation and Nintendo 64, I think it was more, Nintendo obviously a game was family friendly and their games weren't as serious. And then the PlayStation, you know, had a lot more mature games and stuff. So that obviously, you know, and then it didn't help that Nintendo had lost quite a bit through a quite a lot of third party uh, support for the Nintendo 64. So for, okay, I'll give you a huge example. Final Fantasy um, 1, 4 and 6, which at the time was 2 and 3, but then we discovered that um, 2, 4, 2, 3 and 5 wasn't released in, um, in, the, in the United States. Or inside of Japan, I'll just say. So, um, Squaresoft had made their Final Fantasy games for the Nintendo. But then whenever the PlayStation was made, they decided to jump ship to Sony. So, that's what I mean by a prime example of the third party support going elsewhere. So, Squaresoft went from Nintendo to, um, um, to uh, Sony on the PlayStation. And, of course, the difference is this. Nintendo, the, the Nintendo 64 was still cartridges and the, um, the PlayStation went to CDs. So there was no so much that Nintendo could do with, uh, with cartridges as a Sony could do a hell of a lot more with the CD-ROM base. So that's basically what happened. I mean, so Final Fantasy was on, Final Fantasy was on PlayStation and then... But don't, don't worry, don't worry. The Nintendo 64 was still a good system and it had a lot of... The first party games were fantastic. And I think what definitely gives Nintendo 64 a big thumbs up is it has the best game ever made. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Ring of Time. But before I get into the two games that I'm going to show you while I do my review of the Nintendo 64, I'm going to show you the system. And here it is. The Nintendo 64. I've had this Nintendo 64 since originally it was my cousin's. But then my dad bought it off him. And I've had it ever since. So I've had it, I've had it since 2001. But it is, it's, I've had it for a long time. And it still works. I, I did have a problem with it for a while. Where it kept resetting. But all you do is you just, you take this bit off here. And you take the expansion pack out. And you just give it a blow and get rid of the dust. And then that, then that stops it from resetting. Because it was, it was resetting on me so. Of course you've got the reset button. And you've got the. The power on button and then of course the the power the power pack was in there and the scart loop was in there so and of course it was also also uh, in good history it was one of the first consoles to have four uh, uh four uh controller ports which would be needed because you had great games like you had mario kart 64 you had mario party which is a game i love but i could i took me 18 years to beat my cousin on it which was unbelievable, but it's still a great game. And of course it had 
what's probably considered one of the greatest RP, what was considered to be one of the greatest uh, first person shooters, especially in the Final 64 uh, Goldeneye. So, um, but that, that's it, that's basically something really to it, really. The four controller ports, black, that's where the controller, that's where the um, cotton slot goes, it's got four controller ports. So, it's a pretty good system. You know, it doesn't, to me, it's nowhere near as good as the Super Nintendo, but then again, I will always like the Super Nintendo. So, I'll just show you the controller. Now, a lot of people don't seem to like this controller, but I think it's okay. And I don't even know why it has a D-pad, because there's quite a lot of games in Nintendo 64 that don't even use a D-pad. So, it's just, used, so, and it was also one of the first controllers to have an analog stick. Uh, it's not the best analog sticks. But I still, you know, and I'll give a warning right now. Mario Party is a game where you have to, where you have to turn the uh, analog stick. Now about, now about 15, 16 years ago, I was playing one of the mini games of Mario Party and I managed to uh, uh, get myself a hand injury. So if you're playing Mario Party, please be careful and don't do this. Because you could damage your hand. But for buying that, it's, it's a pretty good controller. Unique, it's definitely very unique. It was the first one to have the C buttons, uh, uh, the A and B buttons, the start buttons in the middle, the analog stick and the D pad, and then you've got the uh, left and right shoulder buttons and the Z button there. So, of course, the Nintendo 64, the controllers came, the controllers came in many colours, you red, blue, gold, black. You know, it was very, it was very good that way. And then later on, they released different colors in Nintendo sixty four. You get red, yellow, blue. Uh, there was even a special Pokemon, red and blue one, where you had Pikachu on it. Then there was a couple of see through ones. So well, that's the that's the main system of the controllers. I will now show you two games. Now I just think it's appropriate that because I'm reviewing the Nintendo sixty four, I just think it's appropriate that I, that I show you these two games. Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now, I'm doing this one because it's every Nintendo system I review, I'm going to do the Mario game because, again, Martin again, Mario is the mascot for Nintendo. So I just think it's only right to show you the um, the Mario games. Like when I did my Super Nintendo review, I showed you the Mario All-Stars, which was a special cartridge where they had Mario Bros. 1, Mario Bros. 2, Mario Bros. 3, a Super Mario World all in one cartridge. So I'll be playing Super Mario uh, 64 for a bit. I'll do the first stage and get the first power star. And then the opening of time, I will just put it on and load one of my games and switch between Young Link and Adult Link and run about and show you stuff just because I intend to do a playthrough of that. So I don't want to sort of play it for you and ruin it. So I'll just have a wee playthrough. So that's just the introduction to it. So I will um I will plug it in, get it set up, and I will make a start on Mario 64. So enjoy guys. Me, Mario. Hello. Right, let's go. That's a Super Mario uh, 64. I'll just erase one of my games. <laughs> Love that when you erase the game and you get Mario going, Wah! It's funny.
Right, so before you go to the castle, just run about and get rather get used to the controls. Our switches between the kit do and Mario and use the C, the C buttons to control the camera. And then A jumps and if you push it three times, you do like a triple jump. Then if you push A and B you do a uh, butt pounce. And then L does nothing. Many things you can do. Like you can if you if you push L and if you push Z and A, you jump. And I didn't really mean to die under the pool, but So basically you just run and you push A and Z together and you do a massive like, long jump thing. Cool. Right, let's run to the castle. So when you enter the castle you discover that Bowser has took over the castle. I always wonder what the kit who ever done the Bowser. I mean, in Mario Bros. Like in Mario Bros. He was dropping them wee spiky things, and now he's been now he's been demoted to uh, cameraman. And um, in Mario Kart, he's the traffic light. He's taught the toes. He's disappearing. His Bowser is over the castle. You walk over to him and just push A. Right, that's the gist of it. Basically, Bowser took over Princess Peach's castle and he's hidden power stars in all the paintings. So that's how you get to your stages. Each stage has eight stars. Now you, you don't have to go in an order. Like this is the first one to get the star, but you can like get you can like get the eight red coins to get that star. Or there's a chain chomp in this stage where you have to where you have to butt uh, pounce the wood. And once it sinks in, the chain chomp busts in and you get the star that way. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go and get the star and beat the uh, the. Uh, the bomb boss, but you'll see what I mean. See, during the Nintendo 64, this was really where games were starting to transition from 2D into 3D. And I have to say, I think Nintendo did a really good job in uh, going from 2D to 3D. Because you had Mario, you had Zelda, you had Star Fox, you had F-Zero, and they were all amazing, all great games. But he chain chumps. Now you can take a shortcut here. I'll try and do it here. I'm trying not to spoil anything because I might review this game. I do a, do a walk, do a playthrough in the future, so I don't want to do too much. Watch out for those uh, cannonballs. There's a shortcut you can take.
Big Bob Orm, Lord of all the blast and master, king of the kabooms. And basically what you do is you go behind him, you pick him up and you throw him, that's all you do. Catch you, see you, And you just do that three times. See you can or see him grab you all three of your punish, and we're fine. So the, the aim of the game is basically you get all the power stars and defeat Bowser. So that's that's just basically a brief look at Mario 64. Um, I just thought it for the purpose of the Nintendo 64 review. But I will return. I will return at a later date to actually do a playthrough of Mario 64. So. I look forward to making that. Right, I will now switch to The Legend of Zelda Opening of Time, which is considered to be the best game ever made. Freezes or skips, it's just these cartridges are quite old. You need to sort of get rid of the dust on them every now and again. Right, let's get to it. Right, you have three files, and that's the newest one I started. And I I think I did that game a long time ago. Played that game years ago. I'll go for this one. This is the Legend of Zelda opening of time. Now this is one of my all-time favorite games. I'm not going to do too much because I plan, I plan on doing a, a playthrough of this. The same way as my Metal Gear Solid this series, I'm going to do one with Ocarina of Time. 
I've just shown you bits and pieces of it for the sake of the review in the 1064. So. I'm at the point where you have to go to the shadows to wash my pack with the valleys. It's uh, thunder and lightning and rain. Hey. This is Harold Field. I can remember a bonus song. Been ages since I played through this. Oh, it is. Right, I'll just go through all the songs. Zelda's Lullaby, Polar Song, Seri Song, Sun Song, Song of Time, Song of Storms, Manual of Forest, The Bolero of Fire, the S I can't really say this, so forgive me if I say it wrong, Serenade of Water, Rel Realm of Spirit, Nocturne of Shadow, and Pre Prelude of Light. I'm going to see if I can play them all by memory. Zelda's Lullaby is. Then you've um, the bonus song, which I just play. I'll play it again. Ah, sorry, song. Gives you the option to talk to her. Then saw the time which is a favourite of mine. Then saw the storms. Then the last one of the normal ones before you start playing the the bottom row you can walk with um also. This is Harold Finn.
I like how I like how uh, they call it. It's really nice. Like, leave it on. As I don't like you've got two weapons, so I'll just show you. You got the bigger rod, big Goron sword, and you got the master sword. See, Mario 64 and Zelda, they were the first two, one of the first two games to be transitioned from 3D, 2D to 3D, and it was absolutely amazing. Right, I'm now going to go back go back to being young Link. Uh, I want to show you Hero Castle because at the minute it's all destroyed and ruined. One of my favourite areas. I just love that theme. That's Hero Castle. That's as far as we're going to go because there are guards who up there and if they catch you, they throw you out. I mean, this is a Metal Gear Liquid, or this is, a, this is a Metal Gear Soul, this is a Metal Gear Zelda. <laughs> Nighttime. You, you can't go to Harrow Castle if it's during night time because the uh, gates shut. Just play the sun song. As young like you haven't got a pony, so travelling over high road feet can take a bit longer. Right, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to go to Kokiri Forest. 
and then that's going to be a bit of just a small preview of these two games to go along with my uh, review of the system. And when I finish this here I will give you my thoughts on what I think of the system and give it a rate and stuff. This is a good way to get items and rupees. This is Link's home. Right, I'm gonna wrap I'm gonna wrap this up here. I don't want to give too much away because I intend on doing a, a playthrough uh, series of videos for Legend of Zelda over the time so right I'm going to turn the system off and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on what I think of Nintendo 64 and give it a rating. Well that concludes my N64 review. Um, if I was to give it a rating um, I'm going to have to give it a, an hang out of 10. Now I'll explain my reasons in a minute. But I hope you enjoyed the two games I played for it, Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now, they're two of my all-time favourite games, especially Ocarina of Time. I have finished it so many times. It's such a great game. You know, it's definitely got a lot of replay value. It definitely brings the, the ranking of the system up. But my reason for giving it a 9 out of 10 is I just don't think you compare it to the PlayStation. Because at the time of around 1996-1997, Sony released the PlayStation and Nintendo released the Nintendo 64 and I just think that the with Nintendo uh, sticking with cartridges limited they limited the, the stuff that they could do with Nintendo 64 plus again as I said at the start of the video it doesn't, doesn't help that they lost quite a bit of their third party support so a plus with the PlayStation being a CD based you know with PlayStation CD base, you know, you could do you can do so much more with CD ROMs and you could with cartridges. So that's why I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. But it's a good system. I think you definitely can't have a video game collection and not have Nintendo 64. I really, you know, you definitely have to get it. I mean the controller's okay, it's not the best controller. Um but there is one thing it does that is better than the PlayStation. It's got four controller ports, as in the PlayStation only had two. So as I conclude this video, I'll give, I'll give the Nintendo 64 a 9 out of 10. 
Um, of course, I give it an anger at 10 as well because I just don't think you can compare it to how good the Super Nintendo was. I know Nintendo 64 had better graphics and it could play games in 3D. I just think that the library of games that the Super Nintendo had, um, you know, the amount of RPGs the Super Nintendo had, and of course, that had a lot of third party games as well. You can't really compare the two. And of course, I think another thing that brings Nintendo 64 down is its Castlevania games are absolutely rubbish. You've, um, like, on PlayStation, you've got Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is considered to be one of the greatest games ever made. And then the two Castlevania games on Nintendo 64 are absolutely utter rubbish. So, with conclusion, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give the video a like, please subscribe to my channel. And I would ask you to write a comment, but of course, due to um, if it being Nintendo and Mario, I'm going to have to uh, make this video made for kids due to the cop a lot. So. But anyway, just still like the video, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching again, guys, because I really do enjoy making these videos, and there's more to come. I mean, I have 13 consoles sitting over there, so I've definitely a lot to work with. I'm not sure what console to do next. Um, I might do the Dreamcast. I might do the Nintendo. Um, my Nintendo doesn't work so well. Uh, my Nintendo doesn't work so well anymore. So what I can do is I can review the Nintendo and then use the Nintendo Mini to show you some of the games. So, well, guys, that's me in my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again. All right, thanks for watching.